What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to build a simple virtual assistant in python so let us get right into it all right guys so the first thing that you need to do is you need to install a library called neural intense so you're going to say pip3 install neural intense like that you can either do it in a linux command line if you have one or you do it on windows in the cmd and then pip install neural intense this library is actually one that I have written myself. It's the second one that I have written myself. The first one was Vidstream for those of you who already know it. Uh, and this one is focused on building virtual assistants using intent files. So I'm not going to do that right now because I already have it. And then we can open up a new Python file and work with this library. Now this library depends on uh, TensorFlow, on NLTK and on NumPy. So make sure you have those installed. Uh, and we're also going to use today the pandas data reader, but this is optional depending on what you want to do with your virtual assistant. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say from pandas, oh, sorry, not from pandas, from uh, neural intents, we're going to import the generic assistant. And this library is currently in the complete buggy alpha. So it can happen that I'm going to rename the classes, but I think gen a generic assistant is going to say the same. Uh, maybe I'm going to add some more classes as we go on. But for now, the generic assistant is just the basic assistant that you can train to do whatever you want it to do. So from neural intents import generic assistant. And then we're also going to say import pandas data reader as web just for the finance stuff. If you're not interested in doing uh, any finance stuff, just skip that one. And then we're also going to import sys. Now, the basic idea of our chatbot is going to be that we provide some intents and intents are basically just examples for uh, or actually intents are categories. But basically, we have uh, different intents and then we have samples of what such an intent could look like. So I'm going to show you a file that's going to illustrate that uh, or actually let let me just uh, code one uh, from scratch here so that you see how this is structured. I'm just going to call this short intense and it's important that it that it is a json file so short intense dot json for example um and i'm going to open this in a new tab here and the basic structure is going to be we have a basic intense object or intense uh whatever you want to call this in json so intense is the parent thing here and then what we have here is a list of intents so we're having this structure here so square brackets inside of curly brackets this is the list of intents and each, uh, each intent in and of itself is another object inside of curly brackets which has like a dictionary basically in here we have attack which is the category the intent itself so for example one tag could be uh greetings so if i'm greeting the bot i'm saying hello hi what's up this is the greeting tag another one could be stocks or a goodbye or uh, show me my to do list, for example. So just a tag name, which is important because we're going to recognize those tag names later on. And then we have some patterns and the patterns are basically just the samples that we provide. Those don't have to be too specific. So you don't have to match the exact pattern uh, that you're providing here. Uh, but you just want to give some examples like, hey, hello, what is up? And what do I mean by you don't have to be that strict? What I mean by that is that later on, if you, for example, just write what up, it's going to still recognize this probably as a greeting because you have what is up and it's kind of similar. So you don't have to match the exact uh, phrases that you're putting into the patterns here. Uh, you just have to, to provide some examples so that the neural network can train what it means to be greeted in this case. So this is what you do. And once you have the greetings, once you don't have to add any patterns, by the way, we need to add some square brackets around this here. Uh, but once we have that, we also can specify some responses. So uh, basically responses like that. Uh, and here we can provide multiple of those. But we're going to use our virtual assistant in this tutorial a little bit differently. Now, if you only want to respond with some text, you can just add some text here. So you can say hello. Uh, hey, I am your assistant, just a basic uh, greeting message, you can have multiple of those if you have multiple of those or more more than one, basically, you're going to choose uh, randomly, which you're going to answer. 
And once you have that uh, tag here, you're going to just end this again. So basically, I'm not going to finish that now. This is the whole object. And then you add a colon, uh, not a colon, sorry, a comma. And then you can do the next one again with tag pattern responses. I'm not going to do this here. Uh, because I already prepared a file. So I'm going to use this one, I'm going to open this in a new tab here. And this is the same structure. So don't be confused. It's the exact same thing, just that I have more tag. So I have greeting, I have stocks, I have to do show, I have to do add, I have to do remove, and I have goodbye. So uh, you can ignore the context set here, you can add it or remove it. This is just from a template. Uh, but basically, you need to have a tag, you need to have patterns and responses. So as you can see, if I'm expecting a response from the bot, I'm going to enter an actual message. If I'm just going to add a placeholder, like here, I just have showing investments showing to do lists, we're not actually going to print those responses. So this is the basic structure of the JSON intense file. So now we're going to use this JSON file in order to train an assistant. And this assistant is then going to respond to our phrases to our messages with actions or with text. So first of all, we're going to define stocks that we hold in this case, again, you can choose your own examples, you don't have to do stocks, you don't have to do a to do list, you can just say, uh, I don't know, shopping list or refrigerator inventory or something like that. You don't need to copy my examples. In this case, I'm going to use stock tickers. So I'm going to say, uh, actually stock tickers like that. And then we're just going to add some securities that we're holding. Again, this is not too technical here. We're just going to do this so that we have something to demonstrate the functionality. Uh, I might make a video on a professional financial assistant in the future. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section down below. But for now, we're just going to demonstrate how this works. So for example, we can hold Apple, we can hold Facebook, uh, we can hold uh, Goldman Sachs, and we can hold Tesla, for example, like that. Now, those are the stock tickers. And then we're also going to have a to do list or to do's. And here we're going to say, I don't know, watch car, uh, watch neural nine videos, you can make a check here. Uh, and then maybe go shopping, or something like that, even though that's not really a to do but uh, however, so those are the basic lists that we're going to use as a resource here, of course, you can have them in files, you can read them in and so on. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're not just going to respond with some messages, we're going to actually have functions that are triggered by the different intents. So we're going to say, for example, that we have a function, which is called the stock function, you can call this whatever you want again. Uh, and this stock function is just going to load the latest prices for all the ticker symbols and print them out onto the screen. So for example, we're going to say for ticker in stock tickers, like that, we're going to have the data, which we get from the Yahoo Finance API. So we're going to say web data reader. And we're going to get this ticker symbol from the Yahoo Finance API. And what we're actually interested in is just the latest price. So just a closing value. And for this, we're going to say, um, F, the last price of whatever ticker we chose was, and then or is whatever. Uh, and then we're going to say data, which is the data frame, we're going to choose the closing column here. So the close column, and we're going to get the last entry. So I location minus one like that. Uh, and that should actually be it. So this is what we print here. And this is the basic stock function here. Um, so now we can define such functions for or such a function for all the different intents. So we can say, uh, we have a to do show, which is different, of course, from the to do add and to do uh, and the to do remove. So we're going to say, for to do in to do's, we're going to say, or actually, maybe before that, we should say print your to do list like that. And then we're just going to say print uh, just to do itself. That's a very simple function. Then we can say to do add It's just going to give us a prompt where we say to do equals input. What to do? Do you do you want to add? And then we're just going to say to do dot append to do like that, we're not going to do any error handling here. Uh, this is not the focus of this video. And then we're going to say to do remove again. 
uh, and we're going to say to do equals which to do to remove. And we're going to say we're asking for a number position, not index position. So we're going to add one. Uh, by the way, we need to say integer. And then we're going to say minus one, like that, because the user is going to input one and we want to delete the item at the first position, which is zero. So we're just going to say minus one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, if such a to do or if the to do actually, we should not call this to do, maybe we should call this index or something like that. Um, if such a to do exists in this list, so if index is less than the length of the to do's, then we're going to say, um, actually, we need to or no, this is not this is not necessary. Yeah, so we're basically just going to remove this by saying print f string, removing, and then we're going to print uh, to do's index, index. And then we're just going to say to do's pop index like that. Uh, that should be it. And otherwise, if it's not there, we're going to say there is no to do at this position. There you go. And last but not least, we can also have the goodbye, which is just going to end the script. So if someone says bye, we're going to say print by and then sys exit zero. By the way, let me check real quick if I'm not blocking anything with my camera here happens all too often. Um, yeah, but there you go. So this is the base. Those are the basic functions that we're going to use here. All right, so now we're almost done. We just need to create an assistant and we need to pass the mapping. So which intent belongs to which function. Uh, so the first thing is we're going to say assistant, let me just recenter this assistant is going to be a generic assistant. And here what we have to pass, at least at this point in time, generic, come on, uh, what we need to pass here for sure are the intents, we need to pass an intense file. What we can pass, we don't have to, we can pass mapping. So we can map individual intents to functions. If we don't do that, we're just going to get the basic responses here. If we do pass a function, or if we do pass a function mapping, instead of calling the response or printing the response, we're going to call the function. So we need to pass the intents file first. So here we're going to say intents.json. And then we're going to have to create mappings. So we're going to say mappings is going to be and then we're going to pass a dictionary where we have a string, which is, for example, stocks. And it's important that these strings uh, match those tags here. So stocks is going to call the stock function. And we're not going to call it, we're just going to pass it. So we're going to pass the function um, instead of calling it. And then we're going to say again to do show. I think this is what the tag is called. We're going to call the to do show function. And for to do at, we're going to call the to do add function. And for to do remove, we're going to call the to do remove function. And last but not least, if we get goodbye, we're going to call the by function like that. So those are just the mappings, we map one tag, one string, um, those strings here, we're going to map them to those functions here. And we of course need to pass that optionally, we can also pass a name for the model. So in case we save it, it's just, uh, it's not just saved as assistant model, but as something special. But that's not too important. So mappings. Um, and we're just going to leave the default name here. And now what we have to do is we need to say assistant dot train model if it's the first time. Now after that, what we can do is we can just say, uh, train it once and then we can say assistant dot safe model. So we save it in a file. And next time, instead of training it again, we can just say assistant dot load model. Now we don't need to pass anything. Um, unless we want to save or load from special files, then we can pass a file name here. Otherwise, it just takes the basic name. So if we provide a name here, 
uh, a model name here. As you can see, the default is assistant model. If we uh, provide a model name, it's going to save into that name and it's going to load from that name, but we can just leave the defaults here. Um, I'm not going to load here now. And once we have that, we can just say while true or while not done, whatever you want. Uh, message, this is the user message is just going to be an input. We're just going to wait for a message here. And then we're going to say assistant dot request request, come on. And we're going to pass that message here. And we're going to get either a response or we're going to trigger the functions. Now before we actually run the script, I need to fix a mistake here, I say in the to do remove function removing to do's dot index index, this of course doesn't make sense. So we need to replace that by just to do's and then in square brackets, the index, this is how you just address individual elements in the to do list. All right, so now let's give it a try. We're just going to say Python three main dot py. And it's going to take some time for the libraries to load. And then we're going to see that the model is being trained. So it should start any second, there you go, 200 epochs. And once the model is trained, we're going to see that we can enter messages directly and we're going to get a or an intelligent response. So we can say hello, or hey, and we're going to get the greetings message because here, of course, we didn't provide any mapping to a function. So we just get the basic response. And now I can do stuff like show me my stocks. The last price of Apple was the last price of Facebook was Goldman Sachs was Tesla was and you can see the prices. Um, then of course, I can ask in a different way. So what are my stocks doing? And if I'm really lazy, and I just want to use this as a sort of command line. Now I think we're going to get a pandas error here. No, we're not going to get a pandas error. Uh, if I if I'm really lazy, and I just want to say like, show stocks, I can also do that. Because it's going to recognize that I'm asking for stocks. This is why this is machine learning and not just answering static responses. Uh, and now I can do stuff like show my to do list. And you can see watch car, watch neural nine videos, go shopping. Okay, add an item to my to do's. And I want to add record a video, for example, show my list. And you can see wash car, watch neural nine, go shopping, record a video. Now I want to remove an item from the to do list. And I want to remove go shopping, which is number three. So I'm going to say three. And it says remove go uh, or removing go shopping. So I can go ahead and say show my list. And we can see that we only have have watch car watch neural nine videos and record a video. Now we can also what was the last one was just buy, right? So we can just say buy. And it's going to say bye and it's going to end the script. Alright, guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Now this video today was very generic as the name of the class already said so we can build every bot with it or every assistant with it, you can build a gaming assistant, a school assistant, a finance assistant, whatever. So this was just the basic functionality of this module. In the future, I might make a video on a financial assistant on a more specific assistant. If you have any wishes or suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. And besides that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.